And we know that, guess what? Guess where 80% of all kidney disease comes from? Hmm, I don't know. It comes from diabetes. Yeah, it makes sense. So, so high levels of blood sugar via excess fructose and, and crapohydrates in our diet, that's going to put a lot of kidney stress. And I'm going to guarantee that with more stress on your kidneys, you're going to have a harder time converting some of those amino acids like the citrulline to arginine. And arginine is going to help make that nitric oxide, which is going to help open up your blood vessels. And so I wouldn't be surprised the more kidney stress you have from excess carbohydrate, sugar slash fructose. And I'm not going to, I'll go out on a limb and because we already know the mechanisms there, Evan, we know that issues like mold and heavy metals could also decrease nitric oxide. And I wouldn't be surprised if part of that mechanism is through stress on the kidneys. What do you think? Oh, it makes total sense. I mean, I had kidney pain. I know that was one of my symptoms when I first got exposed to mold. I thought it was just like adrenal area, but looking back, it makes more sense that it was actually kidney. So I did take some kidney support formulas, astragalus and agaricus mushroom and some other things to help boost kidney function. And the symptoms luckily went away. And also one of the symptoms of mold exposure is increased urination, especially at night. So we talked to a lot of people that, uh, talk about they're, they're up in the middle of the night peeing all the time. That was a mold symptom. And I used to have it. I was up four or five times a night peeing. I, I no longer have that issue after detoxing and then supplementing uh, with different nutrients for the kidneys. So yeah, I, I think you're, you're definitely spot on. 100%. And I'm looking at a couple of studies here. Um, there is a connection between low levels of thyroid hormone and low levels of nitric oxide. And this one study here, it's a review on the topic but they're definitely talking about more, you know, more studies on humans are needed, but there's definitely a connection with adding in thyroid hormone and helping to improve nitric oxide levels. So this is kind of like the chicken or the egg thing. So I look at a lot of nitric oxide things are like more downstream, meaning it's like more of an effect than a cause. So we're talking about it here because it plays a really important role with oxygenation and the coronavirus and, and some of the um, disease symptoms that may occur. But People that are listening to this that are functional medicine people, we may be inadvertently helping your nitric oxide levels just by moving to a paleo template. By helping you break down your protein, maybe you're getting more citrulline in your diet. By looking at your thyroid, maybe you have an autoimmune thyroid issue, right? Maybe your thyroid is getting destroyed because you're eating a whole bunch of gluten and dairy and processed food, and that's exacerbating your leaky gut and exacerbating your autoimmune issue, which could then be affecting your nitric oxide level. So a lot of times we may be fixing your nitric oxide by helping your thyroid or by fixing your gut permeability through a gut infection or by assessing mold in your home or heavy metals in your mouth or your environment. So, you know, you don't have to break out fancy supplements every time. A lot of times we may be doing this just via diet and other, what I call upstream uh, functional medicine system assessment to get to the root cause of the systems upstream because above, below, inside out, if we deal with the systems up here, the symptoms downstream may improve. And a lot of times that may be through regulating nitric oxide through other upstream things not connected. 